Yo, check it out. My name's Just Insane from Anti Flag, and you're watching Rocked. Peace. So you just got finished playing Aftershock with an impressive background that we were talking to right before the interview. I'm going to show a picture of it too. Can you describe what that background is of Andy Flagg right now? Yeah, the, uh, the background is the Oval Office with a giant skull uh, sculpture made out of money. That sounds about right. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it represents a lot of things. I mean, part of it is the fact that in that particular shot, in that, that backdrop, which is also the, the backdrop is also the cover to our new record American Fall coming out next weekend if I'm correct so that's for, right yeah, and um, yeah. but the, the point is is that the chair in the Oval Office is empty mm -hmm. and, you know I think that that's representative uh, of the fact that Donald Trump really isn't doing the kind of things that you would expect a president to do you know correct. he's kind of absent on the job he's actually not on the job he's absent from doing the job and of course on top of that while he's absent he's out working to make sure that himself and his friends become very rich as a result of the position that he's in right now. You know, the very first thing Donald Trump did whenever he became president is he went to Saudi Arabia. He yeah. did a $110 billion arms deal and he made sure that uh, our uh, the, the the relationship between the number, you know, the, the Saudi government who supplies lots of cheap oil to the United Correct. States was intact. So basically right now the two biggest winners since Donald Trump has become president is the weapons industry and the, and the fossil fuel industry. So, and while that's going on, right at that same time from January, February, Saudi Arabia was not on that ban list for countries not to be able to come back to the U.S. and back, on that temporary ban, if, you cor if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, Saudi Arabia was saved out of those many other Middle well, Eastern right. countries. It, even, so. though, even though the 9-11 the hijackers were primarily from Saudi Arabia. Right. And Saudi Arabia is a regime that's responsible for lots of human rights violations, uh, it, but on top of that, for spreading an uh, ideology of hatred towards America. Correct. It's dark so, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is dark stuff. But you realize that's when you realize that money is at the heart of all of this. Yep. And whether it's Trump or whether it's anybody else who's in that kind of corporate elite class, it always comes down to a dollar for them. And it's really interesting because Trump, Trump presented himself as this kind of economic populist. But the yeah. reality is, I mean, he's a fucking billionaire. Inherited. And, and inherited billionaire. Inherited. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's about as silver spoon as it gets. Do you think the situation now, I'm, it sparks like with the NFL because that's on focus right now. Do you think with the per current president situation with the GOP at the heads of the table can improve from this point? Or is this a situation where it's got to bottom out before it finally gets better? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, maybe things did have to get really bad before things would get better. One thing that Donald Trump has actually accomplished and happening is that Amer Americans are now talking about race. They're talking about racism. Yeah. It's something that Americans have not faced. It's you know, it's really interesting when you're in Europe, you know, there are monuments all over Europe to huge mistakes yeah. that were made in the past. You, you know, you go into any major square in Germany and there's a monument to the Holocaust it, it, and, and they're facing their dark history. Yeah. The United States has never acknowledged racism in the form of slavery, in the form of uh, segregation, Jim Crow. And until we really acknowledge these kind of issues and really talk about them, we're never going to get past them and we're never going to write them. I mean, you know, there's, there's never been major steps taken to right segregation, to right Jim Crow. There are still repercussions as a result of those things that, that people aren't talking about. And if we don't face those things, things won't get better. I agree. That's a very well-spoken way of putting that. I Much better than I could say without stammering on over and over again. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Oh, Not for a fucking so minute. so many edits. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm just going to edit everything out that I stammer on, too. So, more optimistic news. Yeah, Next Friday yeah. is a big day for you guys, like we kind of alluded to. American right, Fall right. is coming out. Right. So, for the fans of American Spring, which was a few years yeah, ago, yeah. what can they expect coming to this new album? Well, I think what was interesting, you know, like, obviously, they're, they're kind of like a brother-sister record, gotcha. you know? And with American Fall, we were kind of looking at where things are, where things, uh, the, the beginning of something and right. where things are headed. Now with, with American Fall, we're like, well, we're here. Here yeah. we are. Yeah. So the question is, where do we go now? Yeah. And, you know, I think the number one record, or excuse me, I think the number one idea that people, that I want people to take away from American Fall is the fact that 
it is a message of solidarity throughout the whole record. Mm -hmm. To me, it's it's a it, it, solidarity is the most important message that we're bringing forth through the record. And for that reason, I think that it's it's actually like a really positive record. Like a lot of the songs, even though we we deal with like some in heavy issues, it, it's interesting in that they sound optimistic. Yeah. You know. And, you know, I think the primary message I wanted to get out there is all these people are being scapegoated, all the people that are being attacked by Donald Trump and his allies, whether whether it's African-Americans, women, uh, Mexicans, uh, immigrants, refugees, Muslims. Um, we want those people to know that they're not alone and that there are people who are out there fighting for them. and and standing standing by them. I mean, I have African Americans in my family. Yeah. Our guitar player is marrying a woman from a Muslim family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can just go on and on. I mean, we have very good friends in the trans and gay community. Okay. Um, so, when you talk to these people, they're scared. Yeah. Since Donald Trump, they are scared. And they have, uh, they, they should be scared. I mean, you look at what happened in, in, uh, in Virginia. And you realize, like, wow, you know, Donald Trump has given a lot of, um, he's given a wink and a nod to racists and bigots to go after people. Yeah. And so I, we want those people to know that they're not alone and that there's people who are going to support them and fight for them. Definitely. I mean, speak, I know time's running out. You have a lot of other people to talk to. Just this past Thursday, said Scumbag in Virginia just gave a speech at University of Florida, and he was actually boot out the building they yeah, yeah, actually yeah. got together yeah. so your point's kind of proven people well, can stand together to do something about pe this people can and you know it's really important that that no one allow neo-fascists to have a platform exactly like that that's my saying from this time forward is no platform for neo-fascists yeah. the the original free you know the original anti-fascists who fought in spain in the 1930s, a lot of them were from America. They were called the Abraham Lincoln Brigade. They went to Spain to fight fascism in the 1930s, yeah. and they were all—they were ultimately defeated by Franco and and Hitler's forces who who gave support to Franco in Spain. Yeah. But what these people saw is that a very very small fascist movement can very quickly gain a lot of power. Fascists. Fascism in any small form can be a very dangerous thing because it can grow very quickly. Yeah. So anytime we see neo-fascism, we have to confront it. And so yeah, when 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 we see any kind of fascist event, it's really important for us to confront it. And and it's yeah, I mean, I have no problem with shouting those people down because you know what? I mean, it's not a free speech issue. It's not freedom it's, of it's, speech is not freedom to platform well, what you're saying. It's a human yeah. rights issue. Right. Because neo-fascists want to take away people's rights based on the color of their skin, based on where they come from, and based on their spiritual beliefs. That's a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us not to get confused and for us to get in the face and, of those people and deal with them. You know, it's really amazing to me that um, some people say, well, you know, we need to have a dialogue about it. We need to talk about it. You know what? We've had a dialogue about it. We figured it out. We're not okay with racism. No. We're not okay with sexism, homophobia, transphobia, Islamophobia, xenophobia. There's no debate left to be had. There's not. And, and if people think we need to have that debate, then they need to get... This isn't 1900 anymore. It's not. It's not even 1950. <laughs> and that's the problem. We know, Amen. We know Amen. what is wrong. We have to pick a side now. Well said, brother. So well said. Now the time's running short. I know oh, yeah. the next weekend's a big weekend for you. Yep. You had a great year on Warp Tour, running through all the rain and sun for all those oh, crazy yeah. kids. Aftershocks going on. If you had a final message to anyone out there saying, anyone watching right now, just insane to you, what would it be? You know, I, th the thing that always amazes me is what an impact one person can have on the world and on another person's life. You know, the world, you don't, like, it's amazing, like, as a musician, you know, you don't write a song and then you put the song out there and tomorrow the world's better. Right. But what, what you do do as a musician or artist or anyone is that the, the, the way that you influence other people, that has an influence on how they, they go up, what they do when they go out into the world. And they, as a result of that, they change the world on their own. You know, one person at a time making a difference in the world, that adds up collectively and that's what changes the world. So, you know, believe in yourself and believe that you can have an impact on the world because you can't.